I wanted to start by addressing you in the Bureau of Customs and ask you, is this the country we want to be among the poorest of the poor? Or do we want to pull ourselves together so that we can make the Philippines a progressive country that Filipinos can enjoy and be proud of? Why are we doing all of this? If we do not include the Philippines and the development of the Filipinos and the development of our country to make it much more progressive than what we are and where we are, I think we're wasting our time. I think we're just thinking about ourselves. And then our country is left behind by everybody else. And what have we done to ourselves that we're being left behind? So that's why I'm so glad, uh, Commissioner San Juan, that we have this program of making the Bureau of Customs an instrument for national development. Now let me therefore talk about this topic of ethics and courage from the perspective of governance. Everybody talks about governance because it is important. It is important for the Philippines, for the transformation of the Philippines, and for what we can do moving forward. Different people have different ways of looking at it. But what I wanted to say is that it actually stresses only three things. And these three I hope you will always remember. And if there is anything that you will learn from this morning's lecture, it is these three things that governance entails. The first one is the word that you see there, transformation. What does it mean? For ordinary Filipinos, what we mean by transformation is change. Radical change. That's the first C that I would like you to bear in mind. Transformative change. It's not change only for perhaps we become better, but it has to be a radical change. In other words, instead of being Korea, you have to be among the very best economies in Southeast Asia. Second to the last, third to the last, we should become number one or number two. You know, four years ago, we had this initial contest among corporations, not only within the Philippines, but in ASEAN, which corporations would be better governed. And then the expectation is, okay, Singapore will have to be number one, Number two would be Malaysia, and maybe number three, Thailand, and maybe second to the last would be the Philippines. So we worked on it, and we started working with our corporations. And to the surprise of everybody, we beat Singapore, that came in number three. We beat Malaysia, that came in number four. We did not beat Thailand, which came in number one, but we were number two. And it simply showed that we can talk about change, transformative change. Philippine corporations always second to the last, but we can change through governance and make Philippine corporations second to the best. That is what we mean by governance. Transformation from being second to the last to being number two from the very top. So change, transformative, game-changing for the better. In your case, instead of being one of the most corrupt agencies, according to Secretary Singson anyway, when he took over the Department of Public Works, three uh, national government agencies were always rated as the most corrupt. Department of Public Works, where he was going, the BIR, and the Bureau of Customs. But he wanted to change it. That's transformation. The first C of governance is change. Second, look at the third word. Effectiveness, you have productivity, efficiency, productivity, and competitiveness. You've got to compete. You've got to compete against Singapore. You've got to compete against Malaysia. You have to compete against the very best in the region, against the very best in Asia. And you have, as Secretary San Juan mentioned, among the very best customs organizations in the world. 
you got to be competitive you cannot be thinking of the philippines in relation to the philippines cannot be we're a global system and therefore you have to think how do we compare ourselves against the best in our region and what do you need to do for the sake of the philippines that instead of being cholera we should be as good as if not better than singapore we proven it in terms of corporate governance we came ahead of singapore can you do that through competitiveness and become as good as if not better than the best in southeast asia now let's go into the third and what governance entails and this is what i was talking about earlier that when you begin talking about good governance that is sustained over a long period of time we change with competitiveness whether you like it or not over a period of time you begin talking about development you develop the country you develop the filipino you make the philippines much more progressive and instead of being second to the last or being at the level of laos and cambodia you go into the level of singapore and malaysia if not higher so three things when we talk about governance it's not just a question of getting a goal the revalida process of isa which by the way the bureau of customs uh, did i was very impressed i was in the panel and i was not the chair of the panel so i listened to everybody and at the end everybody looked at me and asked what do we do with the bureau of customs and i said why didn't you give him a goal and everybody immediately agreed because it will also encourage you to go for the three c's of governance are you willing to change yes are you willing to be competitive yes are you willing to be an agent for the development of the country the philippines yes all right said then we're talking about governance you want change you want competitiveness and you want development then what do you do in order to get to implement a governance program of change and competitiveness you start with the basic foundation of a building a building is not built from the top a building generally is built from the bottom and you got to go deep and dig deep and have a strong solid foundation so that a building can stand up firm and strong the foundation of that enterprise the foundation of that economy is core values so when you begin talking about a program of change a program of transformation the very first thing that you have to do is to determine what are the core values upon which this enterprise has to be built and founded in order for values to have flesh and blood then the organization must have a sense of purpose a sense of mission that's what the organization needs that is what the country needs we have to have a sense of mission we have to have a sense of purpose in order to do well it's not enough to have values you also must have a sense of purpose a mission what is my mission what is our mission as the bureau of customs what is it that we have to accomplish in order to attain a purpose for which we have been established bureau of customs is a mandate bureau of customs has a purpose and that should serve you well in your governance and transformation program you also must have a dream that at the time you get to this destination you will accomplish something that is really great and meaningful and which can make you proud how do you see the bureau of customs 3 years down the road a vision it has to be a very clear vision it has to be a dream that you accomplish it gives you an inspiration you will accomplish something very good very much in line with change competitiveness and development first core values core values second core purpose 
core purpose. Third, dream, outcome, or vision. Dream, outcome, or vision. What is our mandate? What is our core purpose? What is our mission? And what is our vision? Three years, five years down the road. There you are. It is your duty and your responsibility to know your core values, your core purpose, your mission, and your vision as the Bureau of Customs. So you talk about core values. Absolutely necessary with core values is that you have to do this first thing, which is the first C, and that is consistency. Shouldn't your actions and decisions every day by everyone in the Bureau of Customs be consistent with the core values. That's absolutely important. The entire organization coheres, become one, and everybody committed to that mission, to that core purpose. Whatever the entire organization must cohere, there has to be that coherence from top down, from Commissioner Guerrero all the way down to the last individual. We are committed to this mission. What we need to do in the Bureau of Customs is from top down, we rally around the core purpose and the mission of the Bureau of Customs. And the third C is what we call us. The need for collaboration. It's not a question of just rallying around. We got to support each other. Teamwork. We collaborate for greater efficiency and effectiveness of the internal value chain. First, consistency with the core values, coherence within the organization to serve that common purpose, and collaboration in order to deliver actual results. Now, what do you do to make this work? Ethics underlies consistency. To be ethical means your core values fully consistent with your actions and decisions. That is what Commissioner San Juan was talking about, right and wrong. The consistency between our actions and decisions every day with the core values. And that's why that's ethical. Then, ethics also demands cascading. That's why you have an office for strategy management. Cascading, 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 so that you have coherence. Every unit in the Bureau of Customs coheres with the core purpose of the Bureau of Customs. There has to be the governance charter, there's a strategy map that you're familiar with, and then of course the performance contract for the unit. This is what we are expected to deliver in 2020. And better, this is what we are expected to deliver the first semester of 2020. And even better, this is what we are expected to deliver first quarter of 2020 and that's why you have this strategy map of the Bureau of Customs. This is what you need to follow as a map, as a transformation map in order to go from where you are with your core values into the attainment of your vision as the Bureau of Customs. Then ethics provides benchmarks for actual performance. What do we accomplish three months down the road? And at the end of three months, have I accomplished it? That's why you have performance metrics. You have scorecards. You have scorecards for every unit, for every team in the Bureau of Customs so that you can contribute to the attainment of the vision of the agency. Let's draw the consequences of this. This is a mantra that I like very much, which we have concocted for our governance advocacy. And that is if you're really talking about change, competitiveness and development, which is governance. It's not the task of Commissioner Guerrero alone to attain the vision of the Bureau of Customs. It has to be the task of everybody within the organization. Governance is a shared responsibility. The Commissioner has his targets, performance targets, for the entire Bureau of Customs, but then everybody within the Bureau has to contribute towards the attainment of the performance metrics. 
now that we've covered ethics, what does it demand of each one of us, especially if governance is a shared responsibility? Each one of us has to be loyal. That's why ethics is equal loyalty. What it really means is that loyalty is being ethical. Because, in effect, you're loyal to your institution. You're loyal to the Philippines, the country that we love and that we aim to develop. And you're loyal to the Bureau of Customs that you are working for, that you want to become among the best customs organizations in Asia, if not in the world. How do you show loyalty? It's shown by deeds in day-to-day -day work, which means, therefore, that you have to have identification with the transformation roadmap of the Bureau of Customs. What can I do to contribute towards the attainment of the targets in the institutional transformation? You identify yourself with it, then you specify what is your personal contribution towards it, and finally, you have to formulate a professional performance scorecard. Every individual, governance is a shared responsibility. Therefore, this is the transformation roadmap of the Bureau of Customs. What can I do to contribute towards it? And this is my performance professional scorecard for my work in the Bureau of Customs. This is my contribution. In one of the cities in the United States that had this program, wow, they brought it down to, for example, the repair of the different vehicles that the city uses. Well, there's an office for that. And they have performance targets. How long should a vehicle stay within our garage, within our shop? until it becomes serviceable again. And there used to be five days. They wanted to bring it down to three. They finally brought it down to two. That's performance scorecard. And then I, as a mechanic, what do I do in order to make sure that instead of five days, it's only two days? Very clear what I have to do. Like the janitor maintaining the toilets, like the mechanic maintaining the vehicles that need to be serviced and whatever have you, but with the target. Instead of five days, down to two. Therefore, you have to have the terms of reference of a personal, professional scorecard. Absolutely necessary. You want the Bureau of Customs to be changed, to be transformed, to be competitive. Each one of you will have to have your own professional, personal scorecard. Improvement every day. The Pinoy has to be as good as anybody else. You want a changed Bureau of Customs? You want a transformed Bureau of Customs? Each one of you must have a professional, personal scorecard. Related to your work, what you have to accomplish, what you have to contribute, and the change that you're going to introduce. In the next uh, thing is that Every individual, therefore, in the Bureau of Customs has to be the governance asset for the institution. That first sentence is a great discovery I've made. And I made that discovery precisely working with the fellow officers and men of Commissioner San Juan. So the big discovery that we found out is that every individual is a person. And because every individual is a person, then we're not all work. We also have to play. We have other things in life outside of your work in the Bureau of Customs. And so when we begin talking about every individual becoming an asset of the Bureau of Customs, then professional work is only one of several facets in the life of a person. The other facets, have to be taken care of as well. These are the targets. These are the things I have to do. These are the outcomes that I have to deliver. 
you have to worry about the other facets of your life. The question is, what are the other facets that you have to worry about? And there you are. You really have three things. The first is the duties that all of us have towards ourselves. And that means you have to take care of your body, physical fitness, you have to take care of your mental health, and you have to take care about your ability to function at work and to advance professionally. These are three things that we really need. Body, mind, and spirit. With physical wellness, cultural broadening, professional advancement. Duties to some. What about duties to others? First is family and friends. Family and friends. Outside of family and friends, finance. That's my feel. Very important. Personal finance. Through legitimate means. And then don't forget, we have a duty to the environment. How do you put them all together? Duties towards the Almighty. You bring in God and put Him at the center of how you perform your duties towards yourself and towards the others, then you have the complete personal governance. Scorecard. So beyond work, there's a personal scorecard that includes physical fitness, cultural broadening, professional advancement, social relations, family and friends, financial, and then finally, the environment. And at the middle would be your duties towards God. When you put all of that together, wow, you'll be a complete person. Model talaga. <laughs> this is what this seminar is about. For you, first to focus on your professional, personal scorecard. Bureau of Customs, what you have to do. Okay, let me finish by simply saying this. Loyalty, therefore, includes a deep commitment for one's own overall transformation, change, competitiveness, and therefore development. You bring governance down to your level. If governance is change, if governance is competitiveness, and governance is development, then governance must be personal transformation and change, personal competitiveness, and personal development. We say, therefore, we have this equation. Ethics is equals to loyalty. You have to be loyal. And if you're going to be loyal, then you have to be responsible for yourself with a personal governance scorecard. Now, responsibility means this. For you to become the ultimate governance asset of the institution, you have to worry at two levels. You have to do this for the long term in order to make it truly transformative, a game-changing exercise with individuals who are ethically moored and dynamically self-propelled. That is how each one of you can become a governance asset for the Bureau of Customs. Now, next. These are the requirements. Individuals, you, then very important. Filipinos there know how to work well with others. Easy to talk with, easy to deal with, easy to work with. Very helpful. Part of the team. Not only part of the team, but the unit becomes very important. So that from the individual to the team, to the unit that you belong to, that unit becomes part of an integral whole. And that means that the internal value chain in the Bureau of Customs becomes very efficient and very effective. Everything is efficient, everything is effective, and very important, merong empathy. You're not American, you're not German, you're Pinoy. So you work with your heart as well. Very good. You have to treat others well. The smile, the caring service, be human being. Treat the other people well, with empathy, with compassion. That makes us very different as a people. 
You have to have empathy. You have to care and serve the people that come your way. With efficiency, with effectiveness, but with heart as well. And this you've got to do under your transformation program, under your PGS. Everything must work out very well internally. Then, outside of the internal, you have the external value chain. How you deal with customs brokers. How you deal with the other people that have to work together with you. That external value chain will have to be taken care of as well. And if we do that, then you come out with this last word. Ethics is loyalty. It is responsibility. That's why you take care of your value chain and your external value chain. And if you do that, that's solidarity. And you know what solidarity is? The basis for development. So there you are. Ethics is equal to loyalty. Loyalty demands responsibility. Responsibility means solidarity. Let me close by simply saying this. To make the Bureau of Customs the ultimate agent for national development. That's how we started. Pilipinas kung mahal. Your challenge to be a good Filipino is to become a good officer of the Bureau of Customs doing the transformation roadmap of the Bureau of Customs now. That's your nationalism. That's your patriotism. You make the Bureau of Customs the ultimate development agent of the Philippines. There you are, transformation. We said it's productivity and competitiveness and development through ethics being equated with loyalty, with responsibility, and with solidarity. And finally, you might be asking, where does courage come in? There you are, courage. Courage simply means you've got to do all of that against all of the odds. Many times against your personal preferences. You've got to be willing to sacrifice on a day-to-day -day basis. That is where courage comes in. You conquer against all of the odds. You improve yourselves, you improve your team, you improve your unit, you improve the Bureau of Customs. And with that, we say, Governance is change, is competitiveness, and is development. Okay, that's fortunately the end of my lecture. Thank you very much.